Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Welcome to The Advocates, where we confront issues of truth and the way forward. Heads on, no hold bar. Emeka connects remotely and is taking stock of the deadly cost of incompetence and I'm sure it will be a pricey one. Ekene is also calling a spade a spade. She says we all need to take responsibility for the increasing numbers of motherless baby. And with the lockdown, definitely the numbers will be more. David Hondei, a fresh face, but a veteran to advocacy, will be proving that the pen is mightier than the sword as he frames a debate on which he says, all our futures hinges on. I wait to hear that. I'll be laying down the gauntlet by saying, I won't want peace, but equal right and justice. And I'll be saying much more after the break. According to the great song of late reggae artist Peter Tosh, everyone is crying out for peace here. Yeah. None is crying out for justice. I don't want no peace but equal rights and justice. Reverse of wickedness is my topic today. Before I begin, please permit me to salute some of our latest emperors in Nigeria for making our society a laughing stock. I salute our Supreme Court for not allowing a big man like Ojuz or Kalu to stay for too long in prison by asking the Federal High Court to start his trial fresh on grounds of technicalities. Some people might have to turn to Ogu, Uchi, Alika, and Amadioha to get justice soon. As lawyers, we should be concerned. What's the guarantee that the next trial judge will not be elevated, transferred, or retired before delivering judgment after 12 years of trial? Might be mini jam questions, that's the way they say it in Yoruba. I salute our emperor ancestors, former head of state, General Sani Abacha, for always coming to our aid with huge cash anytime we seem broke. As barely a week after helping to repatriate $311 million, that's about 118 billion naira stolen by the late head of state, the United States says there's a separate $319 million, that's about 121 billion naira, a batch of loot in the United Kingdom and France. How come we're not bothered about looking for people who helped a batch take out this fund? Or maybe they are busy helping others take out more fund presently. But they should remember, like a batch, they might just be sending the country money from the graveyard. I also want to salute Governor Erufai of Kaduna for looking the other way when Fulani bandits descended on a town called Gonan Rogo and Meyaki of Edom Ward of Kajare local government of the state, even after SOS was sent by inhabitants and their representatives. With killings like this, I think this is a wake up call also for us to begin to discuss state policing once again and a proper federal structure. Now, I want to salute Emperor Wiki. Oh, sorry, Governor Wiki of River State for his outrageous display of irresponsibility in being the lawmaker, prosecutor, judge, and executor in the demolition of two hotels in Port Harcourt, an indiscriminate arrest of people and vehicles for violating his executive order regulation in River State, even though he also subsequently violated the order in the meeting he had in a hotel with his party members. A 24 hours coffee imposed on Port Harcourt without palliative and opportunity to access food and medical facilities. Despite the fact that statistics have shown that 66% of new cases in New York are those who have been indoors without any history of contact with the first dead person. I think this is the time for us to begin to take outside the box to solve this pandemic. Why is one cannot query the governor for locking down the state to curb the spread of the virus? Because lockdown actually worked. After all, the federal government tried the same approach in Lagos, Ogun, and Abuja until they realized the unsustainability of full impact of a continued lockdown. But the condemnable, uncivilized, and obnoxious way and manner the governor went about the enforcement of the lockdown calls to question once again the attitude and mentality of our ruler in the way they see themselves and us. Is it the demolition of our fellow's property in Ibadan by the then constituted authority, governor of your state, Abiola Ajimobi, 
or the demolition of Olusola Saraki's house in Elori by the current governor of Kwara State? How about Erufai's demolition of houses of opposition in Kaduna before and after the 2019 election? Not to talk of the recent demolition of hotel known to a political opponent in Benin by the Obaseki led administration. The list is endless. No matter the offense committed, the governor could have sealed up the place and allowed the owners to have their day in court by prosecuting them. Because it is a notorious fact that executive orders, including the ones recently made by the president, no matter how well intended, cannot take the place of a valid law, not to talk of the violation of a fundamental right, without recourse to the provisions of the constitution as to fair hearing. It's unfortunate how some of us, out of sheer politics, endorse tyranny of government and turn around to complain when it affects us or someone close to us. How on earth can someone with his right senses be endorsing the wickedness we can visit on the owners of this hotel? Well, like Fast says, this is Nigeria. Assuming but without conceding that the governor's executive orders are law validly made, it will still take the court to properly adjudicate and pronounce the commission of an offense, portion to same, and appropriate penalties apportion. It is not the place of the governor to make a law, execute and adjudicate on same, as that would amount to concentrating too much power in one arm of government. And as we all know, absolute power, they say, corrupt, you be the judge of that. My advocacy today would be borrowed from the words of his lordship, Bill Bailey Abraham Judge Will, a, judge of, a river state bond judge of the Court of Appeal, in his concurring judgment in the case of Fedo Kafo and governor of Lagos State, with similar facts. According to the learned jurist, Democracy thrives more on obeying and promoting the rule of law rather than the whims and caprices of the leader against the lead. We as citizens should refuse a situation where someone is put through the rigors of the criminal process for an offense not prescribed in any written law, but merely on the directive of his governor of his state. An action which, if allowed to thrive in a democracy such as ours, could confer on such office holder infinite, absolute, and autocratic powers, contrary to the clear provisions of the constitution of the land to which both the leaders and the led are subject. For if we all refuse to allow such autocratic, absolute, and infinite power to fester, ours will be a beautiful democratic society to behold. What comes to mind immediately, or towards the end when you were you're reading, I made notes, so I'll probably reference my notes unless uh, David wants to jump in. But um, what came to mind is the look before you leap, you know, because I was listening to the radio and some people, a good amount of people actually, were defending Wiki. And I was surprised because I said, what they, their argument was, oh, that we need this kind of strong arming, that Nigerians, unless you treat us like this, we won't obey the law. Right. So I'm like, you think so little of yourselves. But you're, you're, for now, it serves you right. You, you're happy for him to behave like this. Tomorrow, if you're on the receiving end of that kind of treatment, then you'll understand exactly. that this is wrong. So what you're defending and what I'll always forever defend is checks and balances because we already have more than enough evidence that our leaders abuse it. Even when the things are even right in themselves, they still abuse it. How much more when you now leave a loophole for them to really go to town? I mean, Wiki's body language, everything he's doing, makes it just reeks of the kind of thing you don't need in this day and age. You know, so I'm, I'm even surprised that the federal government are letting him run riot like this. I'm not sure what they're afraid of. You know, so um, the issue, I just want to quickly contextualize the issue of the 66%. I know it was said in passing uh, in, in New York, because that really, I think uh, the governor of New York accepted that lockdown works to that extent, but he did appreciate that. He was just pointing out a lot of them were minorities, and some of them, yes, they were at home, but the odd person would go and come back. So it was almost like they're bringing the infection to the home, and then everybody is circulating it. So no one is saying, and I, I, I'm at pains to say this, that lockdown doesn't work, because it does. But it's whether it will be implemented well enough for it to have the uh, desired effect. And then um, I like the fact that you chronicle offenders without any bias, because when you start looking at those who have demolished houses, you go through the list. So it's not like you're trying to just target one person. This is something that has a precedent. And for some reason, people have let them get away with it, which is where I'm pained. Why do you let people get away with it? You, know, you made a point the other day, which I heard you say, look, why are you now taking the man to court when you've already taken yeah. justice? You know, you've, already ex you've already executed justice upon him. If anything, you owe him compensation. What if the courts then say you are wrong? Will you go and restore that building back to the way it was? So all of it is a bit backward. Um, I, I have other things to say, but let me stop there. <laughs> it's, it's funny you mentioned the, the fact of him acting without the support of the law. Because if you actually read the executive order that he put out, and I, I did a story on this a few days ago, he actually flouted his own executive order. Oh, really? Executive order said that the prescribed penalty for flouting the lockdown order was seizure and expropriation of the property. It did not mention demolition. Demolition. So this guy literally just made it up as he was going along. Oh, wow. So, um, the issue I was trying to raise in the story that I did was if a governor in Nigeria, because we, we know that the Land Use Act 
is a fairly problematic piece of legislation. It was promulgated under a military government, obviously. Okay. And, and we have modified it. Yes. It vests all the land in a state in the governor. Wow. So technically, no one, the only reason we, do, we, we don't have more of an issue with this is that for whatever reason, the governors in Nigeria have not really abused that power I'm surprised yet. to hear that. <laughs> but with actions like this now, I think it's starting to become more and more apparent that what powers do governors in Nigeria actually have access to? So what aspects of the Land Use Act gives them authority to demolish houses? So I'm not so sure that he has the authority to, to demolish the house as such, mm. but technically, no one in Nigeria actually owns property. The, owned the, governor, the governor holds the property in trust for the people. It's like the feudal it's a system trustee. in the UK. Yeah. Yes, it's a trustee. And, and that's why what the governor gives is a certificate of occupancy for you to occupy oh. for a period no of ownership. years. Yeah. For a period of years. And the constitution also you know, allows you to own movable and immovable properties. Okay. So for that period that you are in occupation, you are in possession, mm. you own that property okay. by the law. Mm. And, and so and if, if, the government, if the government heirs. must revoke, mm. it must have to be for overriding public interest. Mm. Overriding public interest must be clearly spelled out. Before they take that right away before, from you. And then you must also be notified within a reasonable time so that you can approach the court before that right will be taken away from you. So you say you own it for a number of years. What happens when that number, years. after 99 years, you have to renew it? Yes, it reverts back okay, to government. It's like the British system. Okay. And then you renew. Yeah. And so within that 99 years, you can transfer your interest to anybody with the consent of the governor. Okay. You, you know, so it's pretty simple. But what we have are situations where the governors just, for some reasons or no reasons at all, will demolish a property, even when the matter is in court, mm. and they claim overriding public and interest. And no court has taken them And at them the to... end of, in most cases, there are damages, but these damages are not paid from their pocket. This is from the state coffers, from the taxpayers. So no lesson is learned. Exactly. Mm. Emek, are you joining us on this? Are you there? I, 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 I mean, uh, for me, I think um, Libero has touched on this. Um, I think it's a foundational problem. What, what I mean is, it's a fundamental problem. So we're living... We've been living under this climate of arbitrariness uh, since uh, the military regime. And um, so power rests, you know, we see this thing purely from a prism of power. Um, so who has power can utilize that power in any way they deem fit. And they can always claim it's, it's in the public interest. And also we, um, as, as followers, as citizens, um, having suffered under this, arbitrariness for so long, uh, we, we kind of like accept it, uh, which is why you hear people um, saying, oh, people deserve it, um, you know, until it's them um, yes. that, that, that it affects. Um, so, I, you know, it's, it's a big problem. Um, I, you know, I, I, I'm not quite sure um, that we have tested some of the provisions um, in, in law, in, in courts. I think that, um, you know, like David said, this issue of... Um, of uh, the Land Use Act. Uh, that's something that I think that any serious government, uh, maybe in the next election, should really, really look at in, in mm. terms of how do you reform that particular piece yeah. of legislation? Yeah. Because it's something that, um, you know, I mean, you can't, you know, we talk about capital, raising capital. When land doesn't belong to you, which is a fundamental um, aspect of raising, uh, of, of development, yeah. is yeah. capital. Yeah. Um, so when that is clearly at the whims and caprices of one man, uh, then there's, then we have a problem. I think I mean, that the, that... The, the so, other, sorry, I was just going to say Yeah, that. go ahead. Okay, so, um, you know, I, I, what I want to applaud, though, is because I'm beginning to see that the vision of the future looks like name and shame might be our, uh, do you say, public court, you know, way of... Because his, his advocacy is like sarcastic, but in a way, it might be the only thing that gets to them. Because I noticed that as much as Mickey was trying to act like sticks and stones may break my bones, when the public started crying out against him, he started beating a retreat. So that may be the only you know, weapon we have against people who are so thick-skinned and they're operating as if they have a tanker or whatever armory around themselves. So you know, again, I have to commend your advocacy. I feel you really landed a, a proper punch right where it deserved to be landed. Thank you. Thank mm. you. I, and I think... Uh, uh, we uh, need is it possible to say one last thing? Because yes, I just please. Saw, uh, yeah, I just saw a news report of, of in River State where the PDP people had, a, had an event um, was it yesterday or day before yesterday where there was no social distancing, social distancing you know, at that event. 
Um, I expect we could so, go and destroy the hotel also. And he was there as well. Oh, and okay. The governor was See there the hypocrisy. as well. So you know, I mean, it, it's just that was you know, do you pick and choose? You pick and choose which law or that, was, uh, that you choose to you know enforce. Yeah. Uh, it's just it's. You laughing, remember, I laughing. talked about Fuka Kidele yeah. and then the legal yeah. the attorney general last week. Yeah. It is the same thing with Wiki here. And, and anyway, I think you always run that risk when you're being draconian that you're going to end yeah, up exactly, falling, exactly. falling by the same Precisely. rule that you're, yeah. Yeah, you're pushing yeah. against. Anyway, from what we gather, it's a bribe gone, sir. But we'll talk about that some other time. Well, mm -hmm. um, this is uh, the most that time can permit us on this segment. Saying it like it is, is the one option left to us when faced with serious odds. Emeka certainly set out to do this after the break. Go on, Emeka. Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. 